this session, we're going to take a look at half tone screen printing and dot gain, working with Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0. In particular, setting up your custom dot gain settings or curves. Understanding dot gain is really critical to your business, especially from a printing standpoint. Dot gain has the ability to dramatically shift or change what's going on with your colors and tints in the screen printing process. It can radically change what you see as far as the image you've received is concerned and what is coming off of your printing press. And throughout my years working in screen printing, I've seen so many times printers having issues with their simulated process, with their CMYK printing, with their blended spot color printing, and even with their simple one color grayscale images due to dot gain. And very often what we see in the industry is this is something that's reserved for advanced shops and it's an advanced setting etc and you don't really need to deal with it or this or that or the other. Actually with the other rips they suggest that you work with some fairly complicated and expensive equipment. To set up your dot gain in most of the industry rips they suggest that you work with a transmission densitometer. That's a $1,500 investment. Fact is you can work around that very easily working with Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0 and it's easy to do and you won't have to go through the expense or the complication. To get started here, what I'd like to do is take a look at what is dot gain so we understand what's happening when we're making adjustments for this. And here I've got a graphic on screen that represents halftone dots. Here we've got the film dot or the dot that you would have on your actual film after you output your ripped halftone image. And here we have the screen printed dot and it's quite bigger than the film dot. And what happens here is when we burn a dot in a halftone screen and then take a squeegee with force or pressure and push the ink across the screen through to the substrate or garment, the dot will expand or become bigger. So this is what's referred to as dot gain. The dot gains in size or gets bigger. And what happens here, and I've got some grayscales here, is that the tints of color that you're trying to simulate for continuous tone simulation reproduction through the halftone printing process those tints are shifted or moved. The density of the color has changed. We can see here that with dot gain, 90% in our grayscale here will look like 100%. 80% will look more like 90%. So we're actually getting more color or density of color through dot gain in our printed reproduction of the graphic or image that we're working with, thereby changing the color reflection or the image reproduction that we're getting off of press. However, if we make compensation for dot gain, then we're able to get close or very accurate reproduction of the original color densities or values. Go ahead and scroll down here and I've got a basketball here and here you can see the original and here I've simulated what dot gain would do to your image. If your dots have expanded, then your black is going to get darker. If your dots in the orange have expanded, you could end up with a darker orange or a redder orange. For example, if we separated this as yellow and red to make our orange with black, and the red dots were expanding, then our basketball would look redder than the original orange that we were working with. However, if we've compensated for dot gain, we're not going to experience these issues. We'll be closer to the original image. Beneath this, I have an image of Marilyn Monroe, and here we can see here's the original, and here's what the dot game would do to it. The dots would expand and get bigger and make the image darker. Very important, especially when we're dealing with things like printing grayscale images, working with color blends, etc. You know, so often in the industry, we see shops trying to do simulated process or CMYK printing, and they get everything set up on press, and they look on press, and they say, that doesn't look anything like the original. The colors are all different. The tints and shades and tones are all different. The quality is not very good. And very often that's because of dot gain. But if your dot gain is set up correctly and you've calibrated your shop, then you're not going to experience those issues at that level and your printing quality is going to be far better. And you know in business it's the little things that we take into account and do better than our competition that give us the advantage. I mean, if the customer takes this print down to Joe's shop and he gets this, and then he comes to your shop next year and he gets this, the customer is going to see a difference.
next time you get a printing job, you can say, well, I got better printing over at your shop. I'm not going to bother going over to Joe's because I don't want to see my graphic look like this when it's printed. Now with Simple Steps Smart Web 4.0 and our easy to use dot gain settings and compensation tools, any screen printing shop can work at this level relating to dot gain. One of our users, Sean, actually did a test print. And here was his print. And here's our test image. And this is actually included with Simple Steps Smart Web 4.0. And you can open that up. You'll find the test image on the C drive in your advanced t-shirts folder. And then the Simple Steps 4 folder. And here's the dot gain test. Right here, you can go ahead and open that, color separate it, don't apply any dot gain settings to it, then set it up on press and print it. I suggest that you print it maybe 10, 15, or 20 times. You want to grease the screens and see what happens with the dot gain as you get into the run. Don't use your first two or three prints. So what Sean did is he took his actual films that he got from his inkjet, and then he superimposed those over his test print then he took a magnifying glass and he zoomed in. Now, I don't have a high-resolution image here, but he compared the size of his film dot to the size of the dot he was getting on his print. Now, he has a very easy way to measure visually what's the correct dot gain setting for him relating to this test. And then he actually emailed me what would be his curve would be. You'd say, you know, my 90% is 2.25, my 80% is 2.0, my 70 is 2.0, 60% is 1.75, and then 50 through 10% is 1.50. Now that relates to his shop. Your results might be very different. And then he went ahead and sent this to me. Now, he was asking, how do I set up the custom dot gain curve to compensate for that? And that's very easy to do here in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. So you definitely want to do this test print, make this analysis, and take your printing to the next level, especially if you're not compensating for dot gain in your printing process. And then you can start to get into printing at the same level as the advanced printers without the complication or the expense of working with the densitometer and the other things you'll need to do with some of the other rips in the market. So let's go ahead and set up our own custom dot gain curve for Simple Set Smart Rip 4.0 working here in Corel Draw and take our halftone printing to the next level. To get started, I'll go ahead and open up our dot game test file. I'll go over here to the folder icon, I'll click that, go to my C drive or my operating system drive, go to the advanced t-shirts folder, then to the simple steps 4 folder, and here we'll see the dot game test. We'll go ahead and select that and open that. Next thing I'll need to do is go to Window and Dockers, and we want to come down here to the bottom and open our advanced tools docker. Now, if you're working in Corel Draw X6, Advanced Tools will be up here in the menu, but we want to open up our Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. So go ahead and open that up, and then I'll go ahead and click on Simple Steps 4 here. That'll bring that up and load that. I'll bring this over here. Now, the dot gain test file is already set to be color separated and has all the settings already pre-adjusted for the dot gain test. So you'll need to go to the Separations tab. Now, if you want to output this to half tones for your actual on-press print, all you do is come down here to raster type and go to halftones. You can deselect your white highlight. You won't need that. Make sure you don't have any dot gain settings set because the dot gain is already set up as adjustments in this test. Now you could print this out on film, burn your screen, do your printing on press for your test. As I said, print 10, 15, or 20 of these. Don't try and take these readings off your first two or three prints. You want to grease the screen up and see what happens as you start getting into the run relating to your dot gain. Before coming back to get your measurements, you'll need to separate this to a grayscale. And we'll come down here and select grayscale, and we'll deselect white highlight here. You can see we have grayscale settings here and many different settings in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. We really want to give you all the tools you need relating to anything you'd want to do, from traps to chokes, even to setting up your custom dot gain curves. Come down here and I'll click on Generate Separations. And now I have a grayscale file that I can take readings with to make my custom dot gain curve with. Go ahead and close Simple Steps as I won't need that anymore. I'm going to go back here to the dot gain test. I'll go ahead and select the information that was provided in the email from Sean. I'll copy that. And I'll go back here to my dot gain test. I'll go ahead and paste that in. I'll hit P to send that to my page. So I'll just bring that right to where I'm working here. Go ahead and just kind of make a format change here so I can read everything a little bit more easily while I'm working on this. And we'll bring this over and set this up over here and then we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in here. 
so we can see everything while we're working. I'll go ahead and deselect that text with a click. The next thing I want to do is set up my information so it's easy to work with here. And I'm going to use the original because I'm going to take the grayscale readings from the original. And then I'm going to make the adjustments based on the information that was emailed for the custom dot gain curve. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start with the eyedropper tool here. And I can actually minimize this doctor for advanced tools. I won't need that anymore either. Now we can see that 90% was under 2.25. And in our test, we can see we have our settings for 1.25, 1.50, 1.75. Now these all come from the dot gain options in the simple sets. And you can see those also. If you don't want to get into a custom curve, you can use those. But I'll go here at 90% and I'll come over to 2.25. And I can see that's 89. I'll go ahead and get my text tool. And I'll come over here into the 90. And I'll just type in 89. Go to my pick tool and we'll fill that with a white. So I can see that. Now for 80% and 70%, which are here and here, we've got a 2.0, which would be right here. So I'll get my eyedropper tool again. I'll come over to 2.0, and I can see that's a 115 for 80%, and a 140 for the 70%. So I'll go here, and you can see it's a 115. So I'll come over here to my text tool, and I'll just type in 115 right here. And then I'll get my eyedropper again. Come over here, make sure I'm under 2.0. Come down to 70%. That's 140. And we'll just key that in here. 140. Go ahead and select both of these. And I'll actually change these to a white fill also, just so I can see them against the background of the grayscale squares. I'm going to go back to my eyedropper tool here. We can see that we've got down to 70. 60 is at 1.75. So I'll go to 1.75. Come down here to 60, and I can see that's a 150. Go ahead and get my text tool, and I'll just key in 150. Now I can see that against the gray, so I won't need to change that to a white. Go ahead and click off of that. I'll get my eyedropper again. Now we can see that 50 through 10 was 1.50. Now keep in mind that your readings may be very different. We know that our dot gain changes from shop to shop based on workflow, how you handle screens, emulsion, burning screens, your printing, etc. Your, your settings could be very different, but once you've set up the custom curve, as long as you kind of calibrate things and follow the same process every time, then you're going to get consistent results with your dot game. So I'll come down here to the 50, and this was under a 1.50, so I'll go 1.50 down to 50, and I can see this is 161. Go back to my text tool, and I'll just type in here 161. Go back to my eyedropper. I'll come over here to 40. This is a 181. Go ahead and get my text tool and type in 181. Get my eyedropper again, and we're going to be going to 1.5 and 30%. This is 199. Go ahead and type in 199. This is going to give me information while I'm working with the tone curve, and you'll see where all this is going in just a minute. 20% is 219. Go ahead and key in 219 here. And my 10% is going to be 237. So go ahead and key in here, 237. Now I've set up all of my information, so I can go ahead and have this information handy while I'm building my custom dot gain curve. The next thing I want to do is want to go to Tools, Macros, and to the Macro Manager here, so we can start to record our custom dot gain curve. One of the things that you'll need to be aware of, if you're working with CorelDRAW X6, recording of tone curves is only available in CorelDRAW 6.0. Unfortunately, Corel dropped that functionality in 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. So if you're in those versions and try to record this, it's not going to work. The workaround is that you'll have to uninstall your CorelDRAW, install a CorelDRAW 6.0, record your tone curve, and then update your curl draw back to your 6.4. That's a bit of a workaround, but yet you'll see that the results are well worth it when you see the difference in the quality of the prints that are coming off of your press. In this video, I'm working with CorelDRAW X7.2, which does support recording of the tone curve. Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0 is actually only supported by 7.2 in CorelDRAW X7. We don't suggest that you try to work with Simple Step Smart Rip in 7.0 or 7.1, and you can download the free update for 7.2 
or the two-point release of CorelDRAW X7 freely from the CorelDRAW.com website. Now once I'm here in the Macro Manager, one of the things you'll want to be aware of is that as you're recording a macro, anything that you select, deselect, or do is recorded. So you do want to kind of zoom in here so you can see what you're doing and make sure you don't select or deselect any of the objects that you're working with during the recording or else it will change how your docking curve is processed. Now to go ahead and start recording my dot gain curve for Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0, all you do is come down here to the record button. But before that, I want to go ahead and click off and select my grayscale image and make sure I have that selected so when Simple Steps is processing the separations, it will apply the dot gain curve to the selected separations during the separation process. So with the grayscale Selected, all I'm going to do is come down here to the bottom of the Macro Manager Docker, the little red button that says Record, and click that. Now here where it says Macro Name, I have to name this as Dot Gain, or Simple Steps won't record it. You can see I have a typo there. I don't want that A. I want an O. It has to be spelled correctly, D-O-T-G-A-I-N. If it's named anything else, Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0 will not recognize it and won't apply it. Want to make sure we're under Global Macros here, and then we want to go ahead and select OK. So now we're recording. We'll go ahead and go to Effects, Adjust, and Tone Curve here. Now we'll go ahead and move this over, and we'll get our eyedropper tool. And all I want to do is take my eyedropper tool here, and I'll go ahead and select that. And as I come out here, you can see my cursor change to an eyedropper. I'll come over here to 90%, and I'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see it set a dot here. I'm going to go to the Y value and change that to 8, 9, and then I'm going to hit Enter. And you can see that change. I'm going to go to the 80% here, click that, and you can see that was set at 51, and we're going to change the Y value here to 115 and hit Enter. I'm going to go over here to 70 with the eyedropper tool, click that. You can see the increments here. You've got 100, 90, 80, 70. Now under 70, we're going to change that to 140 and hit Enter. It's important that you hit Enter or else you won't have that adjustment in your custom dot gain curve. Now that I've set the 70, I'm going to go over here and click on the 60 right here. And we're going to change this to 150, 150 and hit Enter. I'm going to go ahead and click on the 50 here, and we'll change this to 161, and hit Enter. I'll click on the 40, and you can see these are going in increments of 10 right across the graph. And my 40, I'm going to change to 181. And we can see that, we'll hit Enter. Now for my 30, I'll go ahead and click here with the eyedropper tool. That's already 199. The curve was kind of established when we brought it up right here. You can see it's just following the custom trail here. I'm going to come over here to my 20, and we're going to change this to 219, and hit Enter. And I'll come down here to my 10. We'll click that, and we're going to change that to 237, and hit Enter. Then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now here in the Macro Manager, we're going to click on Stop Recording. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and verify that. If we come down here under Global Macros, Recorded Macros, we can see Dot Gain. Once we verify that we successfully recorded our custom Dot Gain curve with the Macro Manager in CorelDRAW, we can also verify the accuracy of that curve directly here in our document with the grayscale image. When we had the Tone Curve tool open during the recording and we selected OK, we actually applied our custom dot gain curve to the grayscale image. To verify the accuracy, all you need to do is come over here to the eyedropper tool, go ahead and select that. Then we can come up here and roll over our grayscale values and we can see that 90% is now gray 89. 80% is now gray 115, 70% is now 140, 60 is 150, 50 is 61, etc. through the entire image. Once we verified that we've successfully recorded and we've also verified the accuracy of the tone curve for our dot gain settings, we can also test that in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. I actually have an image of Marilyn Monroe here, and I'll go ahead and bring this over here and bring it in. And we'll go ahead and go to our Advanced Tools 
Docker here again, and we'll open up Simple Steps 4.0. From here, I'll actually go to the Half Tones tab. This is going to do the same process that we do in our separations, which will allow us to verify that our custom dot gain tone curve is actually working correctly in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. Go ahead and select Marilyn here, and the first thing I'll do is go ahead and copy her. I'm going to change my DPI output settings to 1800, and I'll also change the rip to 1800. And really, this is for demonstrative purposes. The default settings in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0 are just fine for your halftone ripping. If I wanted to set this to all black, I could. Go ahead here and click on Convert to Halftones, and we'll let that process. Now, once that's finished processing, I'll have a halftone ripped image of Marilyn Monroe in my Corel Draw document without any dot gain settings or adjustments applied to it. We'll go ahead and select Paste, and we'll copy her back in Keep the same settings, but this time we'll come down to our custom dot gain curve settings here and we'll select that. Then we'll simply go ahead and click on convert to halftones and we'll go ahead and let that process. Once that's finished processing with that selected, I'll go ahead and right click here on the red. And then we'll zoom in here and take a look and we can see that our red dots here are smaller than the black dots. Remember, the image behind was the one that didn't have any dot gain settings on it and the image in front that we converted to the red halftone dots actually had the dot gain settings on it. You can see that the dots here are actually smaller than the black dots in the background, which means that these halftone dots have been custom compensated based on the dot gain requirements for your shop and your printing process. You know, as I said earlier in the video, it's the small things that we do that the competition doesn't do that give us the advantage. And the fact is, is that most small shops and medium-sized shops, a lot of them aren't paying any attention to dot gain, and they're certainly not making any compensations for it. However, you as a Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0 user can now easily set up custom dot gain curves that you can apply to your halftone color separations. Those will significantly improve the quality of the prints that are coming off of your presses, giving you, again, the advantage in business and also giving you better print quality for your customers. We'll go ahead and wrap here concerning our custom dot gain curve settings in Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0, and we'll see you in our next video session.